Welcome to What the World Needs is Jesus broadcast. We got an announcement for you today. What the World Needs is Jesus will be at Wills Creek Assisted Living every Wednesday at 1.30. The address there is 1050 Airport Road, Fort Payne, Alabama, 35968. We will be singing and someone will be bringing the word. Everyone is invited to come out and help us sing. You may come to be a blessing, but you will leave with a bigger blessing. We ask that you say a prayer for the residents there. For more information, you can call Brother Ricky Phillips at 256-630-1262. Our message today is going to be coming from Brother Harold O'Neill. It's what path are you on? And he's going to be starting in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 11. Then we're going to have a song by Brother David Cordell, Don't That Sound Like Heaven. If you haven't already, subscribe. Go ahead and subscribe, like, and click the bell to turn on notifications on YouTube. Follow, like, and share us on Facebook. And check out Instagram for some inspirational posts. Now let this video be a blessing. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank you for uh, listening in at this time. And uh, I just want to say to you that um, uh, listen, every time possible, listen, and every opportunity to get shared with others. Uh, put it on your Facebook. Share it with people Amen. about what yeah. the world needs now is Jesus. And there's no doubt about that. No doubt about that. Um, there ain't no doubt about something else, neither. I'm not a singer. But some things are easier to speak the words in a song than they are to try to talk to you about. For many years now, Satan has tried to stop us, but the church of Jesus is still alive. Yes, For in the name of Jesus, we've got the power. Oh, we got the power. In the name of the Lord, yeah, yeah. though Satan rages, we cannot be defeated. In the name of Jesus, Thank we've God. got the power. Oh, yeah. You know, we need to be aware of that. The church still exists. Amen. And for many years, he tried to stop Jesus. He couldn't do it. He tried to stop him from coming. He couldn't do it. He couldn't stop him while he was here. And he couldn't stop him from doing what he came to do. And when Jesus left, he turned it into the hands of man. Yeah. Yes, he did. But he provided man with a helper. He just said, you've heard of him, the Holy Ghost? He said, when he comes, he'll guide you, convict you. Uh, I don't preach the gospel to try to convict people. I preach it to try to obey the Lord God, the Holy Ghost. I am not a convictor. All I am going to do is be playing, not playing, doing the part that God's called me to do. Yes. So today, folks, there is, you, you've heard enough gospel already to save anybody that listens. But the Bible talks about in one place, in the last day, people will be and are willingly ignorant of the word of god i wish that wasn't so i wish that wasn't so and the name of the message today is what path are you on what path are you on and i'll be taking a few moments here uh just my words and good enough oh no my words don't even get me no words it's god's word i have to take a hold of and get my help standing on god's word standing on my word won't get me no words. It, it can't embarrass me. To stand on God's word will never, ever embarrass me, and it won't embarrass you neither if you'll do it. All right. Let me let me read something right here. I'm gonna take me a minute to get there, but that's all right. Cause it gotta be. It's gotta be said. It's in First Peter. I believe it's in First Peter. Let me, let me double check my book again. See again. 
it's in well it ain't it's in Romans, see there? That's why I'd rather look it up. It's in Romans six chapter twenty third verse. It says for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. What are wages? Uh, also, it's got a note here. It says, payment for services. When I worked in my lifetime, uh, I drawed wages. Why? Because I served them people as far as doing the work they paid me for. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. Also says that all unrighteousness is sin. We were born into sin. Some people they're they're getting this out now with man's understanding. Oh, that's bad. Don't say that right there. All men are good men. That's a lie. That that is a lie. And it's meant to deceive you, and that's what it'll do. It's meant to deceive you. All right, what's a, what's a good way to handle things? Uh, the Bible again. The Bible will tell you anything you need to know. It will keep you from being deceived. If you're a Christian out there and you got the Word of God in you and you hear something that ain't right, it just it just won't set right. Uh, you 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 just can't put iron and water together. One of them's got to go. You go to putting a lie and truth together, and something's going to go. But it's up to you to decide what you want to act to. See, there goes that free will again. God's given us a choice what we want to believe and who we want to serve. He's not giving us a choice where we can stand before him and give account of this life, but he is giving us a choice of what are we going to do in this life and where will we stand when we stand. He's not, we don't have a choice. Oh, a lot of people said. I ain't going to know him. Well, boy, I hope you're wrong. I hope you're wrong. I have a lot of friends in hell. No, you won't. Mm. I used to think that back in the past, but I learned pretty quick that ain't right. That ain't right. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. That's in 2 Timothy 3.11. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Now, boy, ain't that good. It means, even though we see it right here in ink and paper, that ain't what makes it real. I can take a pencil and write down on paper, I am a millionaire. But if I ain't got the money and it ain't in the bank account, that's not so. I can say also right then, I am a Christian. But if I ain't got the Spirit of God in me and been washed by the blood of Jesus, that's not so either. If I'm just a church member, or if I'm just a, a person, that, um, and I done, I done it in the past. I wasn't a church member, but a lot of times in the past, when I wanted to be kind of nice toward people, I'd say, God bless you. And I couldn't have cured a lick, but if God blessed them or not, I just wanted them to go and leave me alone. So I know that just to say it don't make it. It don't make it. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. All scripture. Profitable for doctrine, for reproof. For doctrine, what is doctrine? It's how you live your life. I used to have the doctrine, I'm going to drink all and get a hold of it. Get a hold of it any time I can. That was my doctrine. That's what I believe, and that's what I seek, and that's what I did. The, your doctrine is what, you, what your plans are, what your effort goes into, what you do. That's your doctrine. That's what you, you believe enough to do it. That's what it is. For reproof, uh-oh. Ain't nobody, I don't like somebody tell me I'm wrong about something. I 
don't much like it when God failed me. Wait a minute now, Harold. You, you might not have said it that way. You might not have done it that way. I can't say, whoopee, thank you, Lord. I don't say that. I say, forgive me, God. I'm sorry. I'm just being honest with you. I'm just being honest with you. So I'm sorry, God. I didn't, I didn't mean to. I just got ahead of myself. And then for correction, oh boy. Ain't that one thing about it? A lot of people, well, even the law, when you break the law, they tell you you're wrong, but they don't tell you what to do about it. They say, we got a place for you because I've been in jail before. Oh, Lordy. I was a very, I ain't got time for God, but you know what? What I learned, and I don't, I don't know why I'm, I'm, I'm saying these things. Well, I do know why, but I don't know what the, it's, it's going to come up. If you must be listening to us and you're in prison, guess where I really had some up close confrontations with God? In prison. I was in a federal prison one time. Guess who I found in there? <laughs> God. Yep. First week come around, they said, uh, you want to go to chapel? Nope. I'm going to no chapel. I ain't on that road. I wouldn't follow in that path. Second week, they come around and said, you want to go to chapel? Nope. I ain't following that path. Third week, they come around and said, you want to go to chapel? And I said, well, I really didn't have nothing else planned, so I <laughs> guess I will. Now, I didn't get saved at that time, but I seen something and heard something that I never did forget. Why? Because I come to a point, hey, I guess I can listen. I ain't, I wasn't going out nowhere, didn't have no date, didn't have no nothing else going on, because I just going back to the cell and they're going to lock me back up. So, hey, y'all that listen. Does God save people in jail? Yes, he does. Yes, sir. Does everybody in jail that says, I found God? No. But some do. Some do. Some do. So maybe you've got somebody and listen, you got somebody in jail, pray for them. Pray for them. If you uh, got somebody that's in a war zone, pray for them. Because I know I was fired and God himself told me, I said, God, how did I get out of that? And he called the name of my aunt. He said, she prayed for you. Now, I didn't get that from a testimony of other people. I got that from him. Folks, today, God works. He works. The church house ain't the only place where God works. Right. And the tent revivals and it, uh, well, just right here ain't the only place. He works on your end, too. God works anywhere where somebody will say, hey, wait a minute now. You better watch out. The Holy Ghost can visit you <laughs> and listen to him. For correction, profitable for doctrine or reproof or correction. My correction was, I had to be sorry about the things I did. And I was because I'd get me in a tight, and sure, I was sorry about that. Oh, yes. I was sorry about that. But I still had to repent. To be sorry about something don't get you saved. Repenting of it will. Repent don't mean say, well, sorry about that, and take off. It means... And God, listen, I ain't heard you before, but I'm listening now. Can you help me? And he'll never say, come back later. He'll say, what would you have me to do? I, didn't Jesus tell him that? Yeah. He said, what would you have me to do? What would you have me to do for you? Somebody out there today, I believe, is going to be dropped. And I believe some of those folks that are over, uh, like we talked about last week, over in Israel and other places in the world, 
You're hearing this again today. It ain't no, you know, I'm not, don't take my word for the hearing it. I'm taking God's word. For reproof, correction, and for instructions and in what to do. Righteousness. We're, a lot of people say, well, ain't nobody perfect. That's not even the issue. That, that's just something the old devil throwed in there. But we can be right. I'm as imperfect probably as you can find, but I'm righteous too. Why? Because of my faith in him and, and, and the, my doctrine and for my obedience. But most of all, because I receive an honor in my heart and in my life that the sacrifice that he did on that cross was for me yeah. and it hadn't changed and it never will change and he's not going to ever turn his back on me. That's right. Come on. You got confidence in yourself. No, I ain't. I got confidence in him. Yeah. And when he's in you, you can have confidence That's in right. yourself. Yeah. confidence in myself because I know God. And I know this right here. Folks, here's why it's that way. For instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect. Here we go to the perfect thing. Man's opinion is somebody that don't make a mistake. Reckon God's opinion might be of somebody that only makes mistakes. Because sin is the willing disobedience of God. Because in the garden, Satan lied to Eve. He lied to her. Yeah. God said, don't do that. Don't, don't, don't take of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because if you do, you're going to die. When you do, you die. So he warned her. And here comes Satan. As God said this, put a lie in there with it. He said, no. He said, we, we, we can't take it. So if we do, we're going to die. He said, oh, oh, you ain't going to die. What is the enemy telling people right now? What did I just talk about a while ago? The wages of sin is what? Death. What did Satan tell uh, the serp through the serpent? Tell Eve, ah, oh, you won't die. You'll be as God. The only thing that right there meant was you'll have the freedom to choose. When I was a little fella, I didn't know some of the things that I learned when they come up, what they call puberty. Oh. Mm, when I said, well, them choices was there. Things. In this world, uh, God wasn't the only thing drawing me. There was other stuff drawing me. And sadly to say, I didn't grab on to God right then and come my way. I wish I'd have got saved five years old, but I didn't. That's why I can look back and say, ooh, I messed up. But right now, have you ever had a burn on your hand? You put save on it and it quit burning. Or a, a sting by a wasp or something, you put ammonia on it and the sting go, I mean immediately. Brother, sister, whoever's listening, with the hurt you've got in your heart right now, you let the blood of Jesus apply to you by the yeah. Spirit of God and you watch that sting go away. Thank you, Jesus. Now, how hard is it to love somebody to do you like that? And only th and the thing about it, you know, it will always be there with you. The same Jesus, the same Holy Ghost that come in my life is still in my life. I've matured and got older and facing different things in life. And sure, we, we, we've gone through certain battles that we ain't going to battle again. We've overcome. The main thing, the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. We can overcome that. Yes, we can. You say you say you you can you can live without sinning. I 
see in the Bible, do you? You say, well, no man's perfect. I don't talk about that now. Righteousness. The Bible says in 1 John, it says, little children talking to the church that you sin not. But if you sin, you have an advocate with Jesus Christ, the righteous. What is an advocate? Have you ever been to court? I am. And I had an advocate. What was an advocate? My lawyer. Have you ever heard that song, When Mercy Walked In? Oh, yeah. Oh, the advocate walked in. <laughs> on, and you know what? He got some pull with the judge. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Come on. He honey. has. He got some pull with the judge, <laughs> y'all. Glory to God. You've got somebody representing you that has got some pool with the Father. Yeah, amen. Yeah. God may not, he might and he might not listen to everything I say, but he'll listen to Jesus. Right. Yeah. And that's the job of the lawyer to argue, which he don't have to argue with God, just there it is, the Father. My blood's on him. Innocent. Innocent it's charged. Amen. Come on in, brother. Come on in, son. Somebody out there today, you're, you're, you're being drawn by the Spirit of God. And believe me, it ain't none of us here drawing you. Don't, don't, don't turn the thing off if you feel that drawing. And uh, the drawing of God is pretty stout. It'll ruffle your feathers for you. But you know your feathers might need ruffles if they lay in the wrong way. Right. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfectly, thoroughly furnished in all good works. I used to drink and say all kinds of words. Now I read Speak the word. If I do have a bad day, I know who to call on. Let me say this right here, too. Let me say this to you. I want, I want to go to another scripture. And my word's not good enough, folks. I'll tell you where I'm going soon as I get there. Knowing this first, for uh, Second Peter 1 and 20, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. For this prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. I can only tell you the truth. I can only tell you about Jesus and try to live a life that... Backs up what I say. I don't preach me perfect, but I preach to God that I serve is perfect and that he hears and he forgives and he adds nothing to If anything, he takes something away from me. There's another scripture I want to uh, say to you right quick. It says, if we do sin, if we do sin and we confess our sins, God is faithful. Yeah. Yeah. What does faithful yeah. say? It means every time. Yeah. And just. To forgive us our sins. Now listen to this. I had a fellow one time, he said, I fell from grace, which means he started walking in sin. He said, I'm going to try to get back where I was. I said, why are you going to go back there for? I said, won't you just go on further? Hey. Anywhere I'd be at, if I'd climbed up a mountain, I fell from one place. Next time, I wouldn't go to that place. I'd go on further. Amen. Yes, sir. And cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He is the only one can do that. We can't do it. We can't say enough good words. We cannot do it. But Jesus, by the Holy Ghost, can. He can. We're not telling you 
listen, the church is not telling whoever's listening. We're not telling you that we're the answer. We're telling you that we know the answer. Yes, sir. Amen. And we're telling you what the answer is. That's right. Uh, again, every one of us is assigned to speak of a certain subject because the Lord asked me one time, I heard a lady say something, I said, hmm, I don't know about that, Lord. He said, can you tell the whole story? I said, no, sir. He said, that's when I call others. There is no competition in the God called men. There's no competition. I know those that are not walking where they should be now, there may be some competition. But another thing Jesus said, said, uh, upon this rock, talking about upon what Peter said, not on Peter, what Peter said, he said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. He said, upon this, not upon Peter, but upon this. And naturally, he was putting confidence in Peter, said, I know you're going to tell him. The fact that he's the son of God, he said, in the, hay, the gates of hell will not prevail. Hell has caused an awful problem in this world. Hell, meaning the things of Satan, has caused an awful problem. That's what's going on right now. It is. And anywhere in the world, you're listening. And I know, I talked to you a, a while back about a lady that was from Jordan. They said, if Jesus had been the Messiah, who he said, he'd have come off the cross. Folks, he couldn't. He couldn't. If he had, there wouldn't have been no uh, We probably wouldn't be here right now. There would have been no gospel to tell you. There would only have been some words in history that may have been recorded. Jesus said, nope. And I wiped them out right then. In heaven, it would have been recorded that way. But he didn't do it. That's why we can stand right now. Because he was the Son of God. The Messiah, the one that takes away the sins of the world, is him. You know, that was only mentioned by the uh, John the Baptist. I believe first time in Scripture you hear it said. He said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. Takes away. Were they that that time was having to do for a year at a time, sacrifice? But listen. You can get rid of your sin through the blood of Jesus for the rest of your life, if you will. It's up to us, folks. The devil lied to Adam and Eve, and if you'll follow down through Scripture, the history of what they had, what they had, and what has happened from then to now, that's where it started right there. And look out there now. And he's lying to people now. He's lying. Telling people Jesus didn't resurrect. But if you ask the Lord, he will send you proof, which will be the Holy Ghost. Yeah. If you ask with a sincere heart, not with a haughty, doubting heart, with a sincere heart. And like that brother said earlier, he said, God, if you're real, show me. You get ready to get showed. He will. He did me. And I had a little trouble there for a few days uh, to, as I was, I won't call processing, the Spirit was uh, sanctifying me, processing me into the family of God. And the Lord even spoke to him about this. So uh, I reverted back to things I used to do uh, for a minute. One time, it's a one-time thing. He said, we're not doing it that way. He said, we'll either do it my way or we won't do it at all. Right. I repented right there on the spot. And I've always tried to remember that God is someone that loves me, cares about me, yeah. he's not against me, he's not plotting against me. Right. And uh, I know that my God walks with me. Now, God did not have to prove this to me, but I'm going to say this today. You can know that God walks with you. More than one time in my 43 years of preaching, I've been preaching, and I felt something strange. 
more than one time. Listen to me. This ain't me tooting my own horn. This is what other people come and told me. I have felt that my right hand something, I don't know, and twice, at least twice, they said while you were preaching, there was the biggest angel standing beside you that you've ever seen. Now here's the only reason I mention it. God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You might not see him standing there looking, but he's there. Sometimes he'll let other people see him to verify what you're saying. Folks, I hope and pray that he verifies what I'm saying to you today. Think about it. Listen to this right here. Have you, lately, I've heard about a lot of people I know passing away. But you know what? They have one of our names on the list. It just ain't got a date there, and it ain't got a, a description of what's going to happen. But we're on the list. I tell you what, let's get on the other list that's written down in heaven. Come to Jesus. I wonder if he right said, I wonder how, I wonder how God smiled and said, hot dog or the nothing. <laughs> I'll write her down. Amen. I don't know how happy he gets about that. But I know how serious he is. God bless each one of you. God bless each one of you. And I want to say thank you for listening. And I promise you, I didn't just decide what I was going to talk about today. I felt impressed. As the other brothers come and they speak to you what they feel impressed to say. We feel impressed and led of God to come this way. So, uh, if you want to call, call Brother Ricky Phillips at 256-630-1262. Brother Larry Moss at 256-603-0641. And these people ain't joking. They will try to help you. And what the world needs, you can email it, is Jesus. And I can't say the other part, y'all. So I want to say this right here. God bless you. Thank you so much. And Jesus loves you. And he's just waiting on that call. God bless you. And thank you for taking your time and listening. Till next time. There's a window into heaven I can close my eyes and see Where there are no earthly struggles And the soul there is set free Where the deaf and dumb are shouting Cause the blinded eyes can see those crippled legs are dancing Out across the crystal sea I've been listening There's a special place in heaven Where the unborn babies play They're rocked in arms by mama Whose chance has slipped away and All the unwanted children Say my daddy, he's the king Oh, and there's smiles on all their faces As they spin around and sing don't that sound like heaven? Don't that sound like home? Where the Son of God is reigning. Those tears are finally gone. 
Don't that sound like heaven? Don't that sound like home? Darkness red is overtaken by the light that's always on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you. Now listen, people. The price of heaven, it's expensive. But don't you worry about the cost. Because it was paid in full by Jesus. <laughs> when he hung up on and all those things that he promised are gonna be there like he said as an eternal reminder of the precious blood he shed will that sound like heaven don't that sound like home where Jesus is reigning? Thank God those tears are finally gone. Don't that sound like heaven? Don't that sound like home? Darkness there. The light's always on. Darkness lifts over again. By God's light, it's always on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.